Hi, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 363. You operate the power of God. In this episode, we're going to read sections of the Bible showing us how God has given to us the authority and the ability to operate the power of God. We're going to get into the subject of you operate the power of God. It's good to know that the power of God's out there, but let's I'll start operating it ourselves. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Operating the power of God. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Sounds pretty good, huh? But that word gifts is in italics. And that shows us that it's been added by the translator and it's devoid of authority. And actually, in this verse, it doesn't belong there. The word spiritual is the Greek word uh, pumatitos, which means spiritual matters. So this verse would actually read, Now concerning spiritual matters, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. See, the book of Corinthians was, was not written to people who were Judean by religion, but rather to the Gentiles, which they had many gods, many idols, made of wood or stone or metal, just many gods. Matter of fact, you know, they'd have a god for everything. They have a god for the sun, they have a god for the crops, god for the harvest, god for the rain, they had many gods. And he says, and you know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. That's what they were taught. You can only go as far as you've been taught. If you, can, if you only know as far as John's baptism, that's as far as you can go. But if you know more, you can go more. You can always do less than you know, but you can never do more than you know. I love that. Dumb idols, that means no power. Just nothing there. Just a piece of wood, a piece of stick, you know, people praying. Will you, will you make my garden grow? A piece of stick or wood or metal won't make your garden grow. It's just, it's just, it just sits there. You can yell at it. It won't move. You know? Verse 3 says, Therefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. Now speaking by the Spirit of God is talking about speaking in tongues. It says, I give you to understand that no man speaking in tongues, speaking by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus a curse. I'll tell you what they used to do with these dumb idols. If you had a dumb idol that was in charge of your harvest and you got a you got a bad harvest, you could you would give that idol what for? Up. <laughs> You'd say, You son of a and you would just give it up one side and down the other, that dumb idol, because you had a bad crop. That's the way they would do that. So he's saying here, he says, Hey, when you're speaking in tongues you're not calling Jesus a curse. You're not cursing our Jesus. Don't worry about that. Because that's what the you know, the Greek, when they had all these gods, that's what they would do. They had a god for any everything and anything. And if it didn't do what they wanted them to do, they'd just give it what for. And uh, then it says, and, no, and that no man can truly say, or no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Or, or truly say it, but by manifesting the Holy Spirit. That's how you really know that you're born again, is when you manifest the Holy Spirit. Now let's go down to verse 7. It says, The manifestation of the Spirit. It's talking about Holy Spirit, right? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So the Spirit is given to how many men? Every man. Everyone who's born again gets the Spirit, right? And then it, and it says, To profit with all. Now we're going to talk about the, the prophet. 421 and that that 421 is talking about the prophet. For to one prophet is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. That's when you get information from God. To another, another prophet 
the word of knowledge where God gives you valuable information by the same spirit that same spirit that you receive to another prophet believing by the same spirit to another and you just put the word prophet in because that's what it's talking about the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another another prophet of the spirit is the working of miracles to another prophet right prophecy to another the discerning of spirits where you know about devil spirits that are around or even holy spirit that's around to another prophet diverse kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit divided to every man severally as he wills now that word severally is the Greek word idios which means one's own so this verse reads but all these work at that one and the self same spirit the spirit you get when you're born again that Holy Spirit the comforter that Jesus Christ came to make available dividing to every man his own as what as he wills so if a person wills they could speak in tongues if they will they can impart the gift of healing if they will they can receive information from God see it works just like as he wills which is wonderful as he wills now let's go back to John 14 12 John 14 12 we looked at this verse today and we're gonna look at it again but this is the verse that says verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father now we know that Jesus Christ has already gone to the father right and he gave the gift of Holy Spirit and he says verily verily I say unto you the works that I do shall he do now what did Jesus Christ do we just have to think a little bit and we know what he did he did some miracles but what are, what, what are the greater things well one of them has to be speaking in tongues because Jesus Christ never spoke in tongues you know another thing that Jesus Christ never did he never led anybody into the new birth he never did that you know why it wasn't available until the day of Pentecost so Jesus says hey, you see everything that I'm doing here you guys are going to be able to do that and even some stuff that I haven't done yet haven't done you're going to be able to do that too pretty wild pretty wonderful look at Matthew we're here go to Matthew chapter 9 Matthew first gospel chapter 9 and we'll read verse 35 and it says and Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom remember that's what Jesus Christ did a lot of that and healing every sickness and every disease among the people see Jesus Christ was teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he was healing every sickness and every disease among the people this is some of the things that Jesus Christ did but look at verse 36 but when he saw the multitude he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd someone to take care of the sheep you know what a, a shepherd does he he binds the wounds of the lame sheep he feeds them he takes care of them he watches over them he's saying he sees that the people they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd then said he unto the, his, his disciples the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he will send forth laborers unto the harvest Jesus said let's pray for more people to help out with the harvest there's lots of sheep out there who need to have their wounds bound you know who needs to be have them take care of them let's pray for this chapter 10 verse 1 and when he had called unto him his twelve disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness 
and all manner of disease. So Jesus said, hey, right now, I got you 12. You 12 go out and do this. He says, you go out. And he says, I'm going to give you this power. Now that word power is the word asusia. It means authority. It's authority. Now, if, go, if you have the authority to do certain things, you can do them. Now, I'll give you an example. I worked for a company one time that gave me the company car. And this is what they told me. They gave me the company car. The very first day I went to work with them. They gave me the company car. They go, come here. Here's the keys. Here's the company car. Now, this is what you do. You can drive up and down this road. He says, and your pay starts as soon as you get up and down this road. And... If you need gas, you just pull into these service stations and you get gas. You take care of the car and you be on the job whenever you need to be on the job. Okay? And this is your job. See you later. Now, every time I needed gas, you know what I did? I called them up and said, you know, I'm running out of gas. What do you think I should do? No, I didn't. They already told me what to do. They said, when you need gas, you pull into these filling stations and you get the gas. I had the authority to use the car. They told me everything I could do with the car. I, could, I brought the car home every night, went to work every day with it. I didn't drive it much in the weekends because that wasn't part of the things they said I could do with it. But when I needed gas, I, if it needed to have anything worked on it, I knew exactly where to do. Bring it to these people. They look at it. They fix it. They set an appointment. Take care of the car. It was great. I had the authority to take care of that car. So I understand what it means to have the authority. And I, you know something? They would not have liked it if I called them up and said, okay, I'm almost out of gas, what should I do? They would have said, get another job. You don't even know how to do this one. You know what I mean? But that's, they gave me the authority. Jesus Christ gave his disciples the authority against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Look at verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not unto the way of the Gentiles, and unto any city of the Samaritans, and to ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely you have received, freely give. He said, here's the authority, you do it. You do it by doing it. You begin, you start, just like when you speak in tongues. You just, when you speak in tongues, you just move your lips, you throw your tongue, you just say it. When it comes to healing, it's the same thing. You heal. You heal. You do it. You operate the power of God. God has given us the power, you operate it. Look at Matthew chapter 10, which we were at, in verse 9. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse, neither scrip for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. See, they were not to provide for themselves. They were to let other people provide for them. The workman is worthy of his meat of the food that he was to receive. Look at verse 11. It says, And unto whatsoever city or town you enter in, require who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go hence. And when ye come into a house, you salute it. You say, Peace to this house. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. And if it be not worthy, let the, your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, then ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust off your feet. That means you just... Okay, they, they don't want it. They don't want my peace. They don't want what I have to give them. So you just wipe off the dust off your feet. It means have no animosity. No bitterness. Just, okay, guess you don't want the word. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. So Jesus sent out the twelve. His class was real simple. He says, cast out the devil, heal the sick. Freely you receive, freely give. Class is over, get out. In uh, 
in uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 1, it says, After these things the Lord appointed other seventy also, and sent them two and two before his face unto every city and place whither he himself would come. He's going to send these guys out. The seventy. First he sent out the twelve. Now he's going to send out seventy. He says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, and the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers unto the harvest. And I can tell you, this is very true today. There's very few people that will go, that are out there to really help people with the things of God, with the power of God, the kingdom of God that is Jesus Christ said 2,000 years ago has come nigh to them. It says, Go your way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs amongst wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoe, and salute no man un by the way. And unto whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eat, drink, and such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And unto whatsoever city ye enter, if they receive you, eat such thing as set before you. Then verse 9 says, Heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. It says, Heal the sick that are there. Look at verse 17. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan and his light and fallen from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. When God sends you out to heal and deliver people, he says, I've given you power, authority over the enemy. The enemy may be there and, and stick his ugly head out, but nothing by any means can hurt you. I remember one time that I was out with another friend of mine, and we were up late one night. I was in my 20s, and we were up late one night just speaking the word, telling people about the things of God, and, and telling people that they could get born again. Some of the things that I've taught in this class. We just moved into this place, and I guess just before we got there, there was a mighty battle fist fight. There was hair and blood and pieces of skin on the floor. It was a weird situation. And we were in there speaking the word and these two guys came up and said, Who gives you the right to speak God's word to us? Who do you think you are? I said, God gives me the right. In his word it says, He's given me the ministry of reconciliation. He's given me the word of reconciliation. He sent me to speak his word to those who want to hear it. He goes, well, if you don't get out of here right now, I'm going to punch you right to Bolivia. And then a guy that was with him turned around and said, leave these men alone. These guys know what they're talking about. I know, he says. But you know what I saw? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Because we have the authority and the enemy has to back down. By my words, by your words, that's right, by your words, the power in the name of Jesus Christ is the best and biggest power on this earth. I've seen situations where there's, someone's had pain in their stomach, and they went and said, pain, get out of that guy's stomach now. Completely healed. Immediately. We have the power and the enemy can't stop us. Might like to. Can't do it. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. I've read this before, but I'm going to read it again. And he said unto them, Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news to every creature, to every one. We saw er earlier on this uh, 
segment that uh, Jesus sent his 12 out to heal the sick and cast out devils. Then he, we saw that he sent out the 70. Now he's going to send out all of us. And he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, everyone. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, made whole, body, soul, and spirit. But he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. That's where he is right now. But he has sent us forth. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with what? Signs following. Signs follow believing. The first thing that Jesus asked us to do was go preach and teach the gospel of the good news and the deliverance and then to do it then to do it in the grace of ministration we have Christ in us we are to take the place and act on behalf of Jesus Christ go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 on your note is the revised version and in your Bible, if you have a King James, you're reading the King James. But in the Revised Version, it says, We are an ambassador, therefore, on behalf of Christ, as though God were entreating by us. We beseech you, on behalf of Christ, be ye reconciled to God. See, we actually take the place of the absent Christ. We actually take the place of the absent Christ. Jesus Christ is no longer here. We take his place in Christ's stead. Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 7. It says, But speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world to our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have what? Crucified the Lord of glory. Pretty wild, huh? If they known that you would take the place of the absent Christ, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Which none of the princes knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. How many places could Jesus Christ be at one time? One. One. How many places can we be? at one time. Well, we can be as many places as there's many of us around, right? In this room alone, we could be in a, in a number of different places, right? Take all the believers in the world. We, there's like Jesus Christ men and women all over the world. All, if they believe God's Word. Wow. It says here, none, which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They would have rather had just one Jesus Christ around. But they've got many who want to believe this word. That's right. And I'm going to get into the segment now on how to heal the sick. Let's start manifesting this power and start healing people. Number one I wrote down here, you speak, you preach, teach, or proclaim to those who need healing that they can be healed. And those who need healing must desire strongly and believe to be healed. And that believing cometh by hearing the Word of God, the Bible. Romans. We're in Corinthians. Just go one book towards the front. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, So then faith or believing cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. See, we speak that Word of God. We preach that Word of God. We teach it, and we tell them that the good news, that healing is available, so that they can have a chance to believe that. And when they believe it, then things will happen. 
Matthew chapter 9, 35. We've been here not too long ago, but we're going back. Matthew chapter 9, 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. We take in the place of Jesus Christ. We go about and we preach that word. We say, you know what? Healing's available. Now people, a lot of people say, no, you can't get healed. Well, that's not what God's word says. God's word says we can get healed. So we preach it. We must speak with confidence and boldness so that the hearer can also become confident that they can receive healing. We can't be wishy-washy because the people that we're trying to help will be wishy-washy. But if we're confident and bold, healing's available, then they can believe it too, and they can get healed. The second thing to understand is that the one healing, needing healing, must strongly desire and believe to receive healing. And they went to the healer to be healed. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 2. We're not too far from there. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And the thing I want you to see here is, behold, there came, came, he came to Jesus. And he said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me whole. And what did Jesus do? Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. Jesus Christ said, I will be thou clean. Look at verse 5. Then Jesus was entering into Capernaum. There came, I'm, I'm doing that for emphasis, came unto him a centurion beseeching him. He came to Jesus. Right? He came and he beseeched him. He came, he strongly desired to be healed or wanted healing, saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, tormented, I mean, grievously tormented. And Jesus said uh, to him, I will come and what? Heal him. I will come and heal him. Pretty neat, huh? Uh, and part three is, God has given us the ability and authority to heal. Thus, you do not need to pray to God that he should heal the one who is sick. We don't have to go, God, can I uh, use the gas card you gave me? <laughs> you know, you just say, you just heal him. You just heal him. God has already given us the authority to heal. Matthew 10, 1, a couple pages. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power, athusia, authority, authority against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Verse 7 and 8. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. We have received the gift of Holy Spirit. And with the gift of Holy Spirit, we can impart to other people the gift of healing. The gift of healing. Okay, let's go to Mark. Just a few pages. Mark 16, 17, and 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall what? Recover. Go to Matthew chapter 9. Jesus said that they, those who, who would believe, shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And if they drink any deadly thing, it should not hurt them. 
They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. They were to do it. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 6. But, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power, asusia, authority on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Take up thy bed and go into thy house. And he arose and departed into his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power or authority unto who? Men. 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 We've got the authority. We've got the power to do it. Because we've got Holy Spirit. As easily as it is to speak in tongues, it is that easy to impart healing to somebody. Or to cast out devil spirits. Or to do a miracle if they needs to be done. And we'll get into more of this as the class goes on. We must believe that we can heal the sick and cast out devils. You just start to heal the sick. You just start to speak in tongues. You just start and God is there with you. He will give you the words, the actions, the whatever you need to do what needs to be done. Healing can be done. All nine manifestations can be operated and are done just as easily as any of the others. If speaking in tongues is easy for you, then healing is just as easy for you. You just got to begin. The key is to begin. As we continue with the class, we're going to read large sections of God's Word from the Old Testament, learning how all the great believers from the Old Testament were miracle workers. We're going to see the keys and principles they used to operate the Spirit of God. <laughs> 